In Christ alone, I place my trust. Man, what a powerful song. Can we pray about that right now together? Before we pray, I want to talk to you about a passage of Scripture in Philippians chapter 3, where the Apostle Paul is talking about, I put no confidence in the flesh or in my own abilities to do good things or accomplish good things. And in just a few minutes, we're going to talk about that in our brand new message series called I Didn't See It Coming. But before we do that, I want God to set our hearts up for something new, for something life-changing, for something life-altering. As Paul says this, he says, I myself have reasons for such confidence. Talking about what I've done, what I've accomplished. Then he kind of went into his life's resume about what he had accomplished as a Pharisee, a religious leader, the Pharisee of Pharisees, man. But then he says something amazing in verse 7. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. Whatever I accomplished, it's nothing. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own. In other words, not a goodness that I built that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. Everybody say Christ alone. The righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. In verse 10, I want you to catch this phrase, and this is our prayer. I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ. And let's pray that together. Father, today, as we just continue to worship you, I want to know you. We want to know you. And I, I just encourage you, right in your home right now, pray it out loud in front of your kids, in front of your family, just in front of your cat. God, I want to know Jesus intimately, actively. I want it to be real in my heart, in my mind, in my soul, in my body. Because God, today, we're going through extraordinary times and situations and people need to know you're there. So today we want to know you, your character, your heart, your virtue, so that we can maybe be healed and directed and guided in our lives as we go forward in this pandemic and the, these extraordinary times. Lord, you love us. You want us to come to you. And so today we put our trust in Christ alone. And we ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who died on the cross for us. It's in your name we pray and everybody said, Amen. Stay in school, learn a trade, get a degree. Work hard, raise your family, find your purpose. Prepare for the future. Throughout our lives, we spend a lot of time and energy trying to be ready for what life may bring our way. But sooner or later, life throws us a curveball that leaves us saying, didn't see it coming. In a time where this phrase is nearly everyone's response, we need to look to God's word and unpack those didn't see it coming moments. In the middle of it all, God's desire is that we discover a new depth of purpose, meaning, and transformation that could change the trajectory of our lives forever. Maybe that look into God's word will cause us to say, didn't see it coming. Good morning, DC3. It's so good to be with you guys. Uh, I pray that you had a great holiday weekend this past weekend, and I'm so thankful that things are still opening up more in the state of Florida. And some of you are looking at me right now and going, um, Steve, I don't think you're in your house unless you suddenly became a NASCAR driver and won a whole bunch of NASCAR trophies. Actually, I am in North Carolina this week with my family and Sarah's family as we remember the passing of our nephew uh, just a few years ago. And while we thank you for your sympathy, this is a celebration that we do every year to try to just keep his memory alive and just say thank you, Lord, 
for those few months we had with him. And so we're up in North Carolina, uh, staying in a place that was actually owned by Greg Biffle, NASCAR driver, not that that's important, but so you got all these cool trophies behind me. So we're gonna talk about that in just a second. But here's what's crazy about the times we live in. Most of us today would say that uh, we live in a time with this pandemic that while we may have expected something like this, having the bird flu and SARS and things in the past, nobody saw this coming, right? And so that's the title of our message today in this new series, Didn't See It Coming. You ever say that in your life, right? Didn't see it coming. How about a time in a movie? You ever watch a good movie and all of a sudden there's a, uh, what Tyler told me is called a plot twist, right? And you're watching like, whoa, didn't see that coming. How about a time where you got a bonus at work and you're like, oh, Yes, didn't see that coming, or a raise, or a promotion, right? How about finding that $100 bill on the ground? And, and, and you try to find the owner, right? Because we know Christians ain't just gonna keep it. They're gonna try to find the owner, but nobody had it, and it's yours, and you're like, thank you, Jesus, for that. How about somebody paying for your meal, or your shake? Good job, Nicole. As you go through the drive-thru, and you're like, wow, that's so cool. Just a few years back, we had a Faith in Action Sunday where we went around to the community. And we just wanted to do beautiful acts of kindness for people. So Sarah and I were stationed at a gas station over by Walmart on Kings Highway. And so we stood there and as people came up, we asked them, can we buy you gas? Now gas wasn't $1.59 a gallon then. It was like three, $4. I don't know, it was crazy expensive. But you should have seen the look on people's faces when we're like, we wanna buy you gas. They're like, what? What are you trying to sell me? Are you scamming me? Or, you know, are you trying to get money sent from Nigeria? I don't know what's going on there, but hey, it, they were so overjoyed. People cried. They didn't see it coming, man. It was such a blessing. Uh, how about when you get to that vacation spot you rented on Airbnb and it's better than the pictures? You ever did? It's like, wow. But in the same time, you ever got to that spot or that hotel and you go in there and you're like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. How about hearing from someone about how wonderful and respectful your kids are being? Oh man, I love when that happens. But how about when you hear from that person that says, have you heard, do you know what your kid is doing? Mm, right? How about that medical diagnosis that you didn't expect? That car accident, that medical condition that changed the course of your life. How about being betrayed or abandoned by someone you deeply care about? Those are didn't see it coming moments as well. Losing your job. And a lot of you in today's uh, situation, many people are being laid off due to the, the fact of uh, closed society and those kind of things, but hopefully that's getting better. Some of you have gotten fired or laid off after years of service. Unfortunately, we hear more and more of that today that money and numbers take precedent. How about meeting the love of your life? Man, yes. Didn't see that coming, but how about losing the love of your life? You see, when you don't see things coming, it can be both a fortuitous situation where it's really good, or it can be really bad. And isn't it crazy how in a snapshot of time, there's an opening, a pause. Have you ever read or listened to a book and all of a sudden you, you see something or you see something in the word of God? And today I'm praying for that to do, for you today that God would do something for you. In this simple online, maybe uh, you're getting used to it and you're, maybe you're not even paying attention like you normally would if we're sitting in a building. Right now, I'm asking you, Watch for God to do something that you might not see coming. This is so important that you get it. I, sometimes I watch a movie, man, and, and that movie affects me in a way, that scene, that, that plot, that story that makes me evaluate my whole life. Maybe recently you've heard some news, and I know this week there was some really devastating news about yet another tragic, uh, seemingly just evil human being not respecting another human being. And it just breaks my heart. 
And we're going to talk about that over the next couple weeks. But here is an opening. And for us sci-fi fans, it's like a wormhole opens up, right? So you can go to another galaxy. Or it's like a doorway to a new dimension. God has something for you. And, and the, the crazy thing that really scares me is that you might miss it. And my prayer is today that God would do something that you don't see coming that will impact and change the trajectory of your life in a good way. If you're taking notes with us today, you might want to write down this first point, and I want you to check this out. God will use moments you didn't see coming to blindside you in a good way. All through the Word of God, over the next few weeks, we're going to explore Moses and the burning bush. We're going to talk about Paul's conversion today. We're going to talk about uh, Job and the things that happened with him where he didn't see it coming, but uh, seemingly bad things can turn into good things and amazing things can happen through the mystery. But I want you to ask yourself this today. What does God want to do for me, for my family today? Maybe God wants to do a new thing in you today. And are you praying right now for a moment of clarity? Maybe you're a teenager sitting in your house and you're kind of, you know, I don't know, man. Maybe God wants to show something to you about your relationships, about your friendships, about your school choices, about where you should and shouldn't be hanging out. But most of all today, maybe God just wants to show you something about your heart. Maybe you're a young person and here you're looking for the love of your life. Uh, maybe you're looking for that career and you don't know which way to go, go. And God will use this moment to give you clarity, to bring beauty from ashes. Some of you that are going through rough times, some of you that are depressed from this uh, pandemic and this lockdown, and you just say, God, I'm, I don't know what the next step is. And God wants to bring you a didn't see it coming moment in this simple little short online church worship time. My prayer for you today is if you're in the middle of it, raising kids, and you're not sure about this homeschooling thing or what school looks like next year, and you're kind of living in fear and uncertainty that God will bring you clarity on that. Those of you who are getting up in age and you're wondering what's left for me, that God would say, there's so much left for you. Just turn to somebody right now, whether it's your dog, your cat, husband, or wife, say, I ain't old, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. God wants to do a new thing in you. So I want to go to Acts chapter 9. Right now, Acts 9, verse 1. And I want you to read with me. This is about the Apostle Paul, who was formerly known as Saul. Everybody say Saul, okay? Meanwhile, -da 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 -da, think of the old Batman movies, right? Meanwhile, <laughs> back in the Batcave. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. You see, Saul, if you read chapter 8 of Acts, was there when Stephen was being stoned, holding the coats, approving, uh, egging him on, right? He says he went to the high priest and asked for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, everybody say the way. You see, before it was known as Christianity, it was just the way because Jesus is, come on, say it with me, the way the truth, and the life. Amen to that. Here we go. He says, anyone who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, on his journey, I'm so excited I can't speak. Suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, say this with me, Saul, Saul. Everybody say that again. Saul, Saul. Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. You see, he didn't recognize this voice in this person right away. He said, I am Jesus whom you persecuted, whom you are persecuting. He replied, now get up and go into the city and you'll be told what you must do. Now, we're going to stop there today. We're going to continue on this journey uh, next week. But I want to stop there and talk about this a little bit. Can you imagine Saul? And most theologians, most scholars, most commentaries believe that Saul would have been riding on a donkey. Okay? He would have been riding on a donkey. And, 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 and all of a sudden, poof, out of nowhere, 
there comes this flash of light so powerful, so impactful that literally knocks him off his donkey onto the ground. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Sometimes we need to be blindsided to be able to see clearly. Sometimes we need to be blindsided and God will do this. He will intentionally stop us in the middle of the road of life. I like to put it this way. Sometimes you need to be knocked off your high horse onto your low booty to get what God has for you. And here's what's crazy. As we're going to read the story and unpack it over the next few weeks, not today because of time, we do know that this man named Saul became the apostle Paul, which went to the Gentiles and spread the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ, wrote all these books of the Bible. I mean, just crazy what happened from this man who was going to go to kill and persecute and imprison those who he was converted to. And in just a short amount of time, something happened to Saul that revolutionized the trajectory and the heart of that man. This is crazy. He even tells about it in Philippians. He goes on to talk about, I am the Pharisee of Pharisees. He, he gives all of this lineage of how he kept the law since he went from his youth, who his teacher was, all these kind of things. He was, in every sense, right? In every sense of the word, Paul was a godly, good man, right? No adultery, no fornication, no lying, honor your father and mother, keep the Sabbath day holy, observe all the laws. But there was something in his heart that was not good. Because let me, I want you to watch this right now, guys. Because the difference between a good heart and a God heart is huge. And sometimes what you think is a God heart or a godly life is not what God intends because we don't know Jesus. You see, Paul thought he knew God, but Jesus was God in flesh. And here's the fact. Paul did not have a relationship with the Messiah. He knew about the prediction of the Messiah, and that's what he started teaching. He took all the Old Testament and began to see now Jesus was the fulfillment of all that. The Lord opened his eyes. But I want to tell you today, as Paul says, I count all of the stuff that used to be what I thought was my good life, and I count it for what, guys? Loss. I count it for loss. This is so important today because I want you to write this down. Don't settle for the good life. Look for the God life. You know, we're here this weekend, as we were here sitting around the fire, we talk, started talking about Sarah's grandfather that passed during the COVID, right at the beginning of the COVID epidemic or pandemic. And here's one of the sad facts that many of you have experienced. We have not been able to have a family, uh, a celebration of life, a memorial service for Grandpa Martin. And, uh, you know, we just decided while we were here together with some of the family isolated in North Carolina, we're going to talk about his life. We begin to celebrate Grandpa. And Grandpa Martin was an amazing accountant. He was a big time uh, corporate accountant, had many large uh, accounts, some of those which are celebrities up in Ohio. But one of the things about accounting is what we call assets and liabilities, right? And I want you to think about this just a second. What are things in your life that are an asset? Uh, what are things about your personality? What things have you accomplished? What trophies have you won? What trophies of life sit on your mantle, right? Great father, I was a great athlete. Look at my biceps. Come on, baby, look at my abs. Do not look at my abs, okay? I'm just telling you, because they ain't any. They hidden. I've got the, the big ad. Uh, anyway, look at all that I've accomplished. Look at my personality. I'm funny. I'm a great friend. I'm a great mom. I, I'm a great student. Let, man, look at all the likes I have on Instagram and all the followers, right? But here's what you need to know, guys. Paul told us that everything that I accomplish in my ability, I want you to listen to this. 
When we put our value in our ability, it is a lie. Paul was saying, I count all of the stuff I've accomplished, all the things for my ability as loss, which in the accounting terminology is a lie ability. Anytime you put worth and value of your heart and soul in your ability to accomplish something, it is a lie and it will lead you to disappointment, hurt, and death. And I want to talk a little bit about this incident with George Floyd, that, tra that tragedy. You see, here's what I imagine happening today. Guys, I know this is such a sensitive subject. Please give me grace as I talk about this. You know, what I know about most law enforcement officers, which I am so thankful for, is 99.9% .9 of those are great men and women. And I'm so thankful for them. Amen to that. But here's the deal. At some point in the life of this police officer, somewhere his idea of doing a good thing for people, for protection, for upholding the law, somewhere his intent to be good was not good enough. And it turned into evil. It turned into a point where because of pride, because of ego, I don't know, I don't know, but because of something wrong, thinking what was good turned into destructive and eventually into the tragic death of this man, which is so, so broken my heart. And I called many of my friends that I know uh, this affected and said, I'm sorry. I, I, I put out a statement because I felt like I cannot sit silent on this saying this was just a needless act of evil and violence and that we don't need to overcome evil with evil. Guys, listen, we overcome evil with good, but understand good must be determined by Jesus Christ because there is no good in us. Anything in my ability becomes a lie ability. You see, guys, don't settle for the good life. Are you looking for the God life? And I want you to ask yourself this question as we start unpacking the series and we close today. You see, we know God will use moments that you didn't see coming to blindside you in a good way, to put you on a better trajectory and path like he did Paul. But in the same breath, listen to me, Satan will set you up for a sucker punch. He will set you up for a trap to take you out. And today, listen, one of my greatest fears is that you don't take this time that we've been able to stop and think about what's going on and say to yourself, God, what is your will for my life? Not what is my will for you, God, in my life, in my good life. It's not about my good life in the American dream. There's nothing wrong with that as long as it's God's way, not your good way. We need for God to knock us off our high horse. We need to humble ourselves and repent. We need to say as a nation, God, show me prejudice. God, show me wrong thinking. God, show me selfishness. God, help me. Today needs to be a day of repentance and sorrow so that God then can lift us up and show us the way. As Saul, Saul through seeing Jesus, I am a sinful man. And here all along, I thought I was a good man. You see, Satan is wanting to set you up. Jesus came, listen, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But the enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy your family, your heart, your emotions. And listen, guys, today, my prayer as your pastor, as your brother in Christ is that it will not be about the trophies on your wall. It will not be about uh, whether you are necessarily this funny guy, great guy. You know, all those things are good. It's good to achieve for God. But it's about, do you understand who Jesus is? Do you know him? Do you know him? Jesus loves you so much. Cliff's told a story this week 
about uh, being a football player and being put at safety. And I, you know, being a small guy myself, I remember my football years. He talked about number 54 running over. And there's a story I remember uh, when I was playing, uh, you know, city league football, and I was just about 12 years old, that I got put in on defense. I haven't played, I hadn't played a lot of defense, but he put me at defensive end. And I remember I'm going to make the tackle. I'm motivated. And so they ran a sweep to my side and I'm running around and I'm about to attack the running back. I got him in my eyes in the B, but there's a there's a little saying in, in football, they say, keep your head on a swivel. That means you better look for people who are gonna block you, hit you, and all of a sudden, out of from the right, to my right, uh, from the left, sweeping around, came the fullback, and I didn't see the fullback coming, leading the halfback, and he took me out. I mean, it was like the light flash, and all I remember is I'm on the ground, embarrassed, uh, just like, oh my gosh, what just happened to me? Well, I'll tell you what I learned. I learned to keep my head on a swivel and look for that fullback who's gonna take you out. And here's what you need to know today. The enemy wants to take you out, but God wants to lift you up. The enemy wants to take you out, but God wants to lift you up. I want everybody to just close your eyes right now. And I want you to ask these questions. God, am I living the good life or am I living the God life? Am I full of your spirit? Listen, guys, we see all through the New Testament where people encounter, even Paul, if you read on in his conversion experience, and we're going to open that up more in the next few weeks, when he was filled with the Holy Spirit, something changed in him. Something just miraculous. When he met, it wasn't just meeting Jesus, it was being filled filled with the Spirit of God that makes you love differently, that makes you look at people with eyes of compassion, that makes you see the beauty of all races and all colors that God created in all of us, who makes you be able to put up with the quirkiness of your husband or your wife or your kids or your mom or your dad or your friends, who makes you excited to go to work because you're blessed to be able to witness to people that don't know him. And so right now, I just want to pray with every one of you that God would blindside you with his love. Amen to that. Father, I just thank you today for this opportunity. This didn't see it coming moment. That God, that you would do something miraculous in hearts and lives. Lord, I pray today that in people's homes, in people's cars, on their boats, on their lanai's, that Lord, you would say, some hard truth to people to say to them, you need to stop doing this and you need to start doing that. You need to stop treating this person this way and you need to start encouraging and loving this way. You need to stop that path and start this path. Not because I hate you and you're bad, but because I love you and I'm gonna pull the best from you. And the best thing we can do is be a servant of the almighty King, Jesus Christ. And Father, for those that might not know you today, those that are feeling lost, those that have never really known you, that may be thinking I'm a godly person, but they don't have a relationship with Jesus. May they today say, Jesus, rebirth my heart. I want to be born again by you, in you. I want to know you. I want a transformation just like Paul. And in and didn't see it coming moment, your heart will be made brand new. And you will say, I place my trust in Christ alone. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Love you guys. Can't wait to see you next week. Get ready for the next didn't see it coming. God's going to do some amazing things in your life, our church's life. Hope to see you soon, guys. God bless you.